When you look at a chocolate bar, one of the last things you're gonna think is, oh, could this thing potentially improve my insulin sensitivity? I mean, most people look at a chocolate and they say, oh, that's something I definitely should not have. I mean, full disclaimer, if you're eating chocolate that's riddled with a bunch of sugar, then yeah, that's probably not the best thing for you. But I wanna talk about a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at chocolate and how it positively influenced insulin sensitivity. This is really fascinating and we can get down into the mechanistic data of it too. So we'll have a lot of fun with this one. After today's video, check out our sponsor, Thrive Market. They sponsored today's video. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So no matter what kind of diet you're doing and you are busy, being able to have your groceries delivered right to your doorstep is awesome. But Thrive is different because they're all in one when it comes down to like better for you options. So let's say you're doing paleo and you need to figure out like what paleo options you can have. You can literally check a box for paleo and then from there you can subfilter down to baked goods, to treats, to snacks, to whatever. It's so unbelievably awesome and convenient and because they are a sponsor, there's a link down below that saves you 25% off of your initial order plus you get a free gift. So check out Thrive Market. Trust me, at least for me, it changed my life. Made my life so much easier in terms of not having to go to the store all the time. So down below. So this study started out with seven days of no cocoa allowed. <laughs> so they told everyone, you're gonna do this study, you're not allowed to have chocolate, which I would be out, I couldn't do this study because I can't go seven days without chocolate. But anyway, then they went into 15 days of one of two groups, a dark chocolate group and a white chocolate group. Then after that was done, they had a seven day washout period. Okay, during that period, they weren't able to have chocolate again, and then the groups crossed. The group that consumed white chocolate before now consumed dark chocolate and vice versa. Okay, 15 days again. So they had 15 days of dark chocolate and 15 days of white chocolate at 100 grams. The results were pretty interesting because at the end of each stage, they did what's called an oral glucose tolerance test and they were measuring a couple of things. They wanted to measure what is called the homeostasis model of insulin resistance. So this was looking at how insulin resistant someone was. And then they also looked at what is called a quantitative insulin sensitivity score. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. Basically they were measuring how insulin sensitive are you and how insulin resistant are you based on an oral glucose tolerance test. Pretty fascinating. The dark chocolate group had significantly higher levels when it came down to insulin sensitivity. Their scores were 0 0.398 versus 0 0.356, which when you look at those numbers, they look pretty small, but that is a huge difference in terms of insulin sensitivity just by having dark chocolate. But here's the really cool thing. The insulin resistance scores were down significantly in the dark chocolate group compared to the white chocolate. In this case, 0.9 versus 1.72. So pretty darn intriguing. So we see, all right, dark chocolate has these potential improvements on how we utilize glucose. But what is the mechanism? What's going on? Again, as someone that consumes a lot of chocolate, I wanna know what it's doing inside my body because that gives me sort of a practical application for when I could consume it more, right? Well, researchers are hypothesizing that it probably has to do with chocolate's ability to improve nitric oxide. Now, what that is, is we've got these polyphenols in chocolate. We have epicatechin, catechin, and so they're different byproducts of those. Well, what those can do is they can stimulate nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. That means it improves blood flow. When you potentially improve blood flow, you can potentially improve glucose uptake, right? You're able to get blood to tissues that normally wouldn't get that blood, and that allows GLUT4 to actually take the glucose into the tissue better. So normally, when you consume carbs, you have what is called an insulin-mediated vasodilation effect, meaning insulin actually allows your blood vessels to expand and open up. That's to allow the glucose to get into the tissues, just as suggested. So when you have that vasodilation, you have an improvement of glucose uptake. It's called insulin-mediated glucose uptake. The problem is, if you suffer with insulin resistance issues, that vasodilation doesn't occur as much. Okay, your insulin-mediated vasodilation is much less. So when you look at how these potential polyphenols are affecting their vascular system, they have an effect on what is called endothelin-1. When you have an improvement in endothelin-1, you can have an improvement in nitric oxide, leading to less potential insulin resistance. So where the chocolate comes in is if it's having an effect on that and it's affecting nitric oxide, it's making it so that 
the carbs that we do take in are actually able to get to where they're supposed to go and glucose disposal is better. Glucose disposal is what we want. It sounds like it means like we're just urinating glucose out or getting rid of it. Glucose disposal means it's getting disposed of out of the bloodstream. If you were to go consume a donut right now and you were insulin resistant, well, your glucose disposal wouldn't be very good because it wouldn't have a place to go. Okay, our muscles are our largest, what is called glucose sink because they can take the glucose and soak it up. The more muscle you have, the more of a sink you have to hold glucose. But better yet, the more just overall sensitivity you have to glucose and insulin, the better. Because then your body is going to see one small amount of glucose, it's gonna upregulate the right amount of insulin and you're gonna soak it up and you're not gonna have high levels of circulating glucose, i.e. better glucose disposal. So this doesn't mean that you can go and grab a Snickers, and it definitely doesn't mean that you can go indulge in an Almond Joy or eat a bunch of milk chocolate. It means adding some dark chocolate to the mix, melted down, sweetened with some stevia, or some extra dark chocolate with a small amount of sugar may have a really powerful effect when it comes down to your vascular system and ultimately your insulin sensitivity. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.